I just want you to know that quitting is not an option. You may feel like giving up, but we're not going to let you. We're going to tell you tonight, you got to get up. Instead of giving up, you're going to get up and press into the new beginning that God has for you and live the life that God wants you to live. Joseph was a young man who had a dream. And I hope and pray that you have a dream for your life. Not having any kind of goals or any kind of dreams for your life is kind of a boring, dull way to live. Don't ever stop dreaming. No matter how old you are, don't stop dreaming. You're not too young to dream. You're not too old to dream. And even if you've got some shattered dreams in your life, I want to encourage you to dream again. We are created, we're goal-oriented people. We, we need to look forward to something. We need to have something that we're working toward. And so being a person who has a dream and being goal-oriented is a very important thing. It's kind of hard, you know, when you're having to wait longer than you thought you would. And things are a lot harder than you thought they would be. And it seems to be costing you more in your life than what you ever think that you can bear. And it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. But the people who refuse to quit, the people who won't give up, I can tell you, I promise you, if you won't quit and you won't give up, you will make it to the finish line. And I'll just share that with you tonight. If you ever want to get to the palace, you have to stop feeling sorry for yourself. And one of the things that helps us is to realize that we are not the only person on the planet that's hurting. And I can assure you that no matter what you're going through, there is somebody else that's going through something worse than what you're going through right now. I mean, that's just the absolute truth. It doesn't feel any, it doesn't do any good to feel sorry for yourself. Well, I'll tell you something. You can't trust God to give you everything you want. But you can trust God to give you the very best that He has in mind for you. Our disappointments don't come from God. They come from us wanting God to give us what we want. And then when we don't get what we want, we get mad at God because He didn't work according to our plan. Don't be mad at God. He's the only person that can help you. Don't blame God for your problems. When you're hurting, don't give up and think there is no way out. Don't ever think there's no way out because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Don't passively accept injustice. Fight it. And fight it with the one thing that the devil hates. Now listen to this. While you're in the middle and you're hurting so bad that you feel like you can't stand it, instead of sitting around feeling sorry for yourself, having a bad attitude, do all the good that you can possibly do for as many people as you possibly can, as often as you possibly can. There is no way to defeat the devil, no better way to make him miserable. Well, the only way you can do it is to do as much good as you can possibly do. The only way to overcome evil is with good. Every single time that I help a human being, I'm giving the devil a black eye for what he did to me in my childhood. I mean, you're not gonna get the devil back by hating everybody that hurt you. You're not going to get him back by having a bad attitude and spending your life feeling sorry for yourself. You're not going to get him back by being jealous of everybody else who's not going through the things that you're going through. Trust God that you as an individual, that God has a plan for you. And it, it's not like his plan for anybody else. And God knows what he's doing. He's got a purpose. He's got a reason. God doesn't do bad things, but he can work good out of bad things if we trust him to do that. That's your victory. The best that we can do is encourage you to not give up and maybe hopefully try to explain to you some of what you're going through. Because at least if you understand what's happening, you're more likely to not quit and give up. So I'm telling you, when you're hurting, that's the time more than any other time in your life when you need to do what's right. Anybody can do what's right when everything feels good. But there's not a lot of people that can do what's right when everything seems to be going wrong for them. 
Now, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, we never have a bad day or we never have a disappointing time, but, you know, you can shake that stuff off and get right back in step with Jesus pretty quick if you really understand the real dangers of just wallowing around in that kind of stuff. I don't have time to waste any more days of my life feeling sorry for myself. Don't ever run away from something hard just because you don't want to be there. Psalm 91, verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. In Him I will trust and on Him I will lean and rely. I will say of the Lord. What do you say of the Lord when you are in trouble? You say out loud, God, I trust you. I trust you. I'm hurting so bad, I don't feel like I can stand it, but I trust you, God, I trust you. If you have a problem, I can give you a 100% guaranteed answer for breakthrough. Trust God and do good. Trust God and do good. No matter what your problem is, if you're worried about your kids, trust God. If you're worried about finances, trust God and do good. We don't have a problem that trusting God won't fix. And then follow it up with some do good and you got a great package. Worrying was not gonna solve anything. Have any of you ever solved your problem worrying about it? You say, well, I can't help it, I just worry. Don't say you can't help it. Just say with God's help, I can do whatever he wants me to do. If God tells us not to worry, then there must be a way that we can learn how to live and not worry. Some parents think it's their duty to worry about their kids. You don't even think you're a good parent if you don't worry about your kids. Well, if you just spent 25% of the time worrying, trusting God, he would take care of them. We all have times where we wonder, is God really gonna come through for me? Can I really trust God or do I need to have a backup plan? Whether we can trust God or not depends on whether we're trusting him to give us what we want or trusting him to give us his perfect will in his perfect timing, in his perfect way. We're very good at telling God what we want. And I don't, there's not a problem with that. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Ask for what you want, ask for what you need. But there are times in my life where I've found out that what I thought I wasn't wanted really wasn't what I wanted at all. And I would go through times of being really upset because God wasn't giving me what I wanted. And then later on, I found myself thanking God that he didn't give me what I wanted. So you can trust God if you will trust him for his perfect will in your life and say, God, if that turns out to be what I want, yippee, yippee, I'm happy. But if it's not what I want, then I want what you want more than I want what I want.